All right, welcome back to Dinopedia, entry number 20, Diplodocus. Remember to like if you like and subscribe down below for more videos. So of course, the schedule as always, is we're gonna look at the Arc Survival Ascended Diplodocus. We're gonna look at tips and tricks for the Diplo, uh, potential add-ons or Arc Survival to make the dinosaur more unique and more special, and reworking it for my new game, Dino World. Let's get into it. So of course, the dark, the, not dark, Arc Survival Diplodocus is an animal and a reptile, so it is in the kingdom Animalia and the group Reptilian. Description is a sauropod, of course, long-necked dinosaurs. Its traits in game will ta tail whip a player if it gets too close, so it is a neutral dinosaur, so if you do walk up to it, it will attack you. But of course, it's just going to tail whip. Its tail whip does no damage, so it's mostly just going to be a minor annoyance. It is docile when around other dinos, however, so most carnivores won't attack one and it won't attack other dinosaurs. So of course the stats for Diplodocus are a little bit, um, a little bit less than its larger cousin, the Brontosaurus. Uh, its health is 1,700, stamina 550, oxygen 300, food and water 10,000k, 10k each. Um, weight 800, melee zero. Of course, its tail whip attack does not do any damage. Its speed is three meters per second. However, its swimming speed is four meters per second. It's a very fast sauropod, the fastest sauropod in the game, and of course, its torpor is 3,000. So of course, some utilities and tricks, uh, obviously player transport, its saddle can hold up 10 player passengers plus one driver, so that's 11 players that can ride on it at once, that's pretty damn effective for transporting an entire clan of players. Plus its tail whip, its primary attack is a powerful knockback attack, it does no damage, but it is very powerful um, as like a... Uh, if a gig is attacking you, whip it away and just run, because you can't outrun, you can't really outrun a giga on a Diplodocus unless you, just, unless you just pump speed, but what you can do is knock it away so you can run away before it does attack you and kill you. And of course it's a tanky scout. Combined with its high speed and stamina with its high health pool it makes for a good base scout. Scan sending it down into forests to scout over bases. It can survive tur um, turret attacks for a limited amount of time so you can scout out a base while taking some damage from turrets. So some tricks, of course, it is kind of like a battle bus in some ways with its ability to have 10 armed and active combatants on its saddle, make it a good battle tank for high damage dealing players along with its driver. So you can have a bunch of players with lances, bows, crossbows, and even RPGs and assault rifles just shooting dinosaurs while the rider just, you know, pilots the battle bus Diplodocus. It's a good cliff fighter as well. Uh, using its high knockback tail whip, this dino is good for knocking creatures off cliffs and into water, which is highly effective. If you have uh, megalodons, you can knock a carcara into the water and megalodons can try and finish it off. You can also, you know, if you're fighting a, fighting a bunch of carnos and then a freaking giga shows up out of nowhere on the mountain, knock the carnos off the cliff, knock the giga off the cliff, and do, do some damage from fall damage and just, you know, run away. Because you're not winning the fight against a giga, but you can knock it off a cliff as a good FU to the Giga. And then finally, cargo shipment. With its high carrying capacity combined with the ability to knock over trees and speed, it can use, be used to transport a large amount of items quickly across long distances, more fast and more swiftly than the Brontosaurus. So very useful for cargo shipments. Some additional qualities, I think its tail attack should do dam some damage. It can be like low damage, like 10 to 20, like maybe like 5 to 10 damage, but like not much, but it still should do some damage at least. And of course, wild charge. I think in the wild, if a player hits them and runs away, it will charge through them, through through to them, similar to a trike, but of course not dealing any damage since the Diplodocus doesn't do damage, it's just an annoyance. So players just run away from it, and it says, no, where are you going? Fricker, I'm going to come charge at you and hit you with my tail. So of course, comparing the Ark Survival to the Jurassic World Diplodocus, they pretty much look the same, except the Ark one has uh, some spines on the back of it. So does the, the Jurassic World one as well. But, you know, they're basically the same model, but one of them is longer, and this one's a little bit taller. So, you know, this one's longer, this one's taller. It's kind of like, eh, they're kind of just basically the same. Comparing it to the Dino World one, ours is a little bit taller and doesn't have spines on it because it's kind of more basic model. So I'd say the Ark one wins this fight hands down with its spines. So of course the Diplo in Dino World, we shorten its name from Diplodocus to Diplo. Uh, there's the normal Diplo, uh, the wild and tamed Dino variant, and the mutated Diplo, the product of two tamed, mated, and bred Diplodocuses, plus a gene computer for mutations. 
So of course it's an Animalia, so it belongs in the kingdom Animalia. And it is a reptile because it's a prehistoric lizard, so group reptilian, no changes there. It's the class sauropod, and the family is long sauropod. So instead of growing tall, it grows long. So it joins the Mimichisaurus, Apatosaurus, and of course itself. So the stats compared to Ark, a uh, few changes. Uh, the health is dialed down to 1600 instead of 1700. Stamina is dialed down from 550 to 500. Food and water is dialed down from 8k, from 10k each. And of course the melee, I gave it an extra 5 melee damage because I think it should do a little bit damage, and the Torpor was downgraded to 2,000 instead of 3,000, with a fortitude of 4. So of course, I made most of the stats down because I think it should ha I think that the Diplo should not be that close to the Bronto because the Bronto is much bigger, but I did want to give it some melee damage and of course a high fortitude. So additional treats, I just want additional traits for Dino World. Of course, I'm keeping the wild charge ability. If it's in the wild and the player runs away, it charges after them. And of course, charge tail attack. I wanted to add it so you can wind up and boost the knockback and damage of its tail attack. Kind of similar to the uh, Serato and Carno charge with a Carno horn charge where you charge up and deal extra damage and speed. Same thing here, but with the tail attack. And finally, Bionic Impulse. I think the Diplo should be a little bit of a healer when in combat. So not only being a freaking battle bus, of course, for players to use, I'm still keeping that ability with the giant 10-person saddle, but also it should heal nearby, nearby allied creatures and players that are riding it while knocking back enemies and nearby enemy creatures. Of course, it has a 30-second cooldown, but you know, gives a healing boost to some to allied creatures and all the players riding it while knocking back nearby creatures. And of course, the last thing we're going to look at, of course, is the Dino World spawns for the main map of Europa. Remember, blue is guaranteed, green very likely, yellow few to likely, orange to rare, red to very rare, and purple for dead. So if we look at the map, uh, the beach biome is where you're very likely to find them. You can find them on the beach, the jungle beaches of the northern jungle and the eastern jungle. Can't really find them on any other beaches, but swamps don't really have a beach, deserts are too hot, badlands are way too hot. Volcanic bays are too dangerous, highlands are for gigas and carcas, and um, yeah, that pretty much covers all the beaches. Um, so of course, and also you can find them in the central plains area as well. It's very rare to find them in the central plains, but you can find them very rarely in the central plains area. But of course, you want to go to the beaches of the jungles to find them very, where you're very likely to find them. Alright, so that's going to be the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like if you like, dislike if you don't, subscribe if you like it. Uh, comment down below your thoughts. Uh, everyone have a blessed day as always. And of course, as always, toodaloo!